everybody, it is the Lawn Gnome, and welcome to your August 2016 episode of Out of the Vault. If you'd like to take a look at all the Disney canon classics that I have reviewed up until this point, please take a look at the playlist provided in the box below. So today we're going to be taking a look at a very interesting Disney classic. As a matter of fact, most people will consider it a forgotten classic. It came out in 1990, around the emergence of the Disney Renaissance period, right in between The Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast, there was this one movie. It was the very first Disney animated classic sequel. It was also the very first Disney animated film that was animated completely digitally. That's right, the very first digital animated film. And that was The Rescuers Down Under, which, believe it or not, is a much better film than most people give it credit for. Of course, we have the returning cast members, Jaja Gabor and Bob Newhart voicing the Mouse Rescue Aid Society duo Bianca and Bernard, throw in a fantastic villain named McLeach voiced by the great George C. Scott, along with his sidekick voiced by Frank Welker, and of course, how can we forget Wilbur, the albatross, of course, voiced by the legendary comedian John Candy. So, The Rescuers Down Under pretty much starts off the same way that The Rescuers does, with a little bit more of a modern twist. Basically, mice in Australia find out that a little boy named Cody has a very good way with animals, and he rescued this rare golden eagle, but McLeach the Poacher is trying to capture it and make a fortune off of it. And because of the fact that he believes that Cody knows where this eagle is, he kidnaps him. So word gets all the way to New York City, and Bernard and Bianca are sent to the land down under to go and rescue Cody. So a lot of people are really mixed when it comes to the very first installment of this duology. Some people like the rescuers, some people don't. I personally really like The Rescuers, but The Rescuers Down Under is definitely a step above. The adventure is more epic, the music is fantastic, the animation is absolutely gorgeous, and the villain, while he may not be as crazy as Medusa, is definitely one of the more fun villains to watch. He and the banter that he plays off of with Joanna the Salamander is definitely fun to watch because while Joanna may not speak, she definitely is a character on her own. Her body language, the slapstick, is just so fun to watch, and George C. Scott just really gives a fun yet threatening voice to a villain like McLeach. And of course, Bianca and Bernard are so wonderful, and I feel that there definitely was a lot that was drawn from the original film in terms of these two characters and their relationship. You can definitely see that the two of them have been working together for a while. You can definitely tell that they have true feelings for one another, and Bernard is finally able to man up and show Bianca that he really is the man, or in this case, case, the mouse that he really is supposed to be. We also have another character named Jake, who is this frontiersman in the outback who guides Bianca and Bernard to Cody, and he's definitely a hotshot. He's got a little bit of an Indiana Jones vibe with him and with how good he is with hog-tying animals. And also, the animation of the creatures and the animals are just, even though they used digital animation, and you could definitely tell that it is more primitive than what we have today, Disney definitely invested a lot into really giving us an exciting and well-animated movie. But the only thing I never understood is, why is it that nobody talks about this movie? I remember seeing it a long time ago, and I don't really remember absolutely loving it, but I do remember really liking The Rescuers, and I think that that's because of the fact that I saw it a little later in life. But The Rescuers Down Under was a movie that I heard about right away when I went to Disney World in 1990. My parents were telling me about it, but I never got to see it. And apparently, because it did not have a good opening weekend, Disney pulled all of its marketing. And I have no idea why, because this is a fantastic, fantastic family adventure. And it's got excitement, it's funny, and of course the comedy is really given to us by John Candy. He just 
made me laugh out loud. And it has been a really long time since I have truly laughed out loud at a Disney canon classic since, I think, maybe Wreck-It Ralph, because I don't remember laughing out loud at Frozen or Big Hero 6 or even Zootopia. But I love all those movies either way. But The Rescuers Down Under, especially with John Candy, the comedy is there, the adventure is there, the kids are going to love it, adults will definitely enjoy this awesome adventure. And if you have not seen The Rescuers Down Under, I highly recommend that you do, and I'm really glad that I finally saw it again because I really, really enjoyed it. I mean, at the same time, it's not the greatest Disney film of all time because I don't think it is a four-star movie, especially when you compare it to the movie that comes right after it, which is Beauty and the Beast, or even a movie like Zootopia. But I will say that The Rescuers Down Under is a great watch, see it multiple times, own it, I own it, and I am giving it three and a half out of four. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. Please put your comments in the box below and let's have a conversation about the rescuers down under and I will see you in the next one. Actions speak louder than words.